A very interesting story. The president of the Nigeria Fencing Federation, Adi Inka Samuel, has revealed that the country will be hosting at least four international championships between now and December 2026, including the men's EP World Cup later in the year. Samuel stated that the country is in pole position to also host the Commonwealth Championships in 2026, while confirming that Nigeria will stage the African Senior Championships in June, July next year. Addressing sports journalists in Lagos, Samuel expatiated that the core agenda uh, on the core agenda of the federation is aimed at developing the sport and raising elite athletes and groom talents from the schools. He also stated that hosting the Commonwealth Fencing Championship for the first time is a big achievement for Nigeria with about 500 athletes coming from different countries across the world. Let's take a quick listen to the president of the Nigerian Fencing Federation. There's a, there's a high possibility that after this particular Commonwealth Fence Championships, it would be included back into the Commonwealth Games. So for us, it's a major, major tournament because you're talking about 500 to 800 athletes that are coming from all the Commonwealth countries. Now, what is even more impressive is that it has never been hosted in Africa. So we will be the first country in Africa to host this Commonwealth uh, Fencing Championships. We have four cardinal points, which is where we operate from. One of them is to host as many major international tournaments in, Af in Nigeria as possible. And that does a lot of things. One, to travel to these competitions, they are quite expensive because a lot of them are in Europe or the US and all of that, the cost of traveling. So when we bring competitions like that to Nigeria, it means that we can have a bigger participation. That's the president of the uh, Nigerian Fencing Federation, uh, Mr. Uh, Adeka Samuel, speaking about uh, the plans of the federation, of course, uh, to basically grow the sport in Nigeria and help it to continue to gain footing and gain ground. So, uh, gentlemen, on this show, we've talked uh, very extensively over the last uh, few days about the fact that Many of these sports um, that we're talking about, uh, especially going to international championships, these are sports that maybe we do not have capacity in. And a lot of people are saying that we should um, pretty much focus, well, the government should focus on other sports that um, you know, we've um, gained a lot of uh, traction in. And, and I think one of our guests, Professor Patrick Omosage, said it, that in the past we've won Olympic medals in boxing, uh, we've won in weightlifting, we've won in athletics, and that these are the sports that we should be you know, focusing on and investing in. But when you see federations like the First Team Federation doing things like this, you cannot help but think that there is a future here and we cannot afford to let it slip by. Okay? Yeah, definitely there is a future there, but how soon? I think that has to be the major question. Um, we're taking a look at the Olympics right now in 2028. That's what we are currently planning for, or rather assuming for. And, um, you know, the, the fact that we currently do not have established fencers who participates regularly. That for me brings about a question. So for me, I think I would still say that it's not something that we should put too much focus and um, investment into. If you want to take a look at it from the long-term point of view, fine, you can start to do that. We can start to infuse fencing into the grassroots level, starting from um, you know, secondary schools up to the tertiary level, so that at the end of the day, when they do get older, they can become professionals. Because at the end of the day, if you say we want to start taking a look at fencing as a serious competition for Nigerians, the question is, in the other African countries, can we have an African tournament? Mm. Where can they hone their skills? Where can they compete against the best of the best? It is still outside of Africa, talk less of um, in Nigeria. So for me, I, I think um, it's a good thing that we have interest in it. That's very good. But you know, in terms of um, multi-sport competitions, I don't think we should put too much focus into fencing, in my own opinion. Well, I mean, uh, Toy, we've talked about many of these um, federations, many of these sports. Um, maybe we should outsource them, right? Uh, considering the fact that a lot of, we are a tremendous amount of Nigerians born in the diaspora. Many of them pick, pick up these sports at a very early age and continue to grow capacity in it. Uh, we've talked about a particular fencer who is the grandson of the late Dora Kiyuli, uh, charming young man who's just 16 years old and is already uh, highly rated in the American fencing community. Uh, th maybe this is where it should go. And of course, the Fencing Federation have him on their radio. He's part of their programs. He already has a foundation here in Nigeria helping to grow the sport in Nigeria. But you believe that they do need some kind of support. At least, they say, even among uh, a man who has 10 children, while he might not he might have mm. his favorites, he cannot truly even abandon his least favorites. Yeah, you know, um, change can come uh, two ways. It can come from 
inside, and they can be forced on you from outside. Um, that's how I view uh, federations like um, the Fencing Federation. Um, we have to find the capacity to generate the interest in the sports from within, and at the same time, get a lot of support from without. Expertise, mm. coaching, training, mm. exposure from outside, while generating the interest and the followership and the you know, capacity uh, from within. So both can go together. Uh, I'm happy that the Federation is already thinking along this line, but I think the way to start is not necessarily by hosting international competitions. It should start from looking within mm -hmm. and try to generate programs that will get the little ones interested. Yeah, the, he did say that, the that, primary that, schools, that schools, yeah. schools are a, a key yeah. part because when of you, the Because when you start by organizing an international competition um, and you don't have the local following, uh, to back it up, mm. it's, it's, it's it, there's, yeah, there's, going to be, yeah. there's going to be a disconnect yes. until you are able to bridge the gap between what is going on inside in Nigeria, in Nigeria from what is coming out from, totally from without. Agree. So, uh, but then you see things are changing. There are a lot of countries that went to the Olympics and participated in sports that they do not even have any kind of facility or program for in their countries really? because of some diaspora uh, yeah. kids yeah. who mm. are doing the sports True. and who can represent the country where they are based and then they have to adopt uh, uh, represent the country of, of their, or, or, of or, or their or origin. Or so a lot is changing in the way, uh, part particularly for competitions like the Olympics, mm. a lot is changing. Uh, and we can tap into it for a, a sport like fencing. But my advice to this federation is, as you are trying to develop this sport, try to also lay a solid foundation for how these sports will be financed and supported independent of government. Mm. Do it like we have the golf. For example, the golf federation that is running and... There are those who argue that golf is an elite sport. That, yeah, yeah. yeah. Even yeah. golf also yeah. under the Great Britain. Yes. Um, you know, so begin to look at how you're going to be able to sustain all of this. Well, and uh, we'll probably be good to go. I, I, I want to say that, you know, this sport looks elitist. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's an elite sport. The equipment is expensive, so they don't expect some grassroots mm -hmm. yada 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 here. You know, this is meant for the elite, and it's not a bad thing. Golf is elitist. Polo is elitist. Exactly. So um, the crucial thing is drum up interest. You can even still drum up interest from the young ones. You, you like the visual we've seen. Yeah, the young ones doing the fencing. Yeah. And if there's anything I've learned from the Paris Olympics, is that. The IOC is now trying to get the Gen Z involved yeah. by bringing in some very new sports. Yeah. Now, fencing it's is not like a new sport. Rock climbing, breaking breaking up, breaking dancing. Well. Mm. Fencing is not new, so to say. It's yeah. an old board. It resonates with the younger ones. You know, try to, you know, it resonates with them. So, this is something I think we also, as uh, this Nigerian sports, have to start happening. In, in the next three Olympics, do we still want to be doing weightlifting? When the world has moved on to lacrosse, we will still be doing when, in the next three I'm, I'm not saying, but I'm also saying that as the world is moving, you also have to start moving. Look at what we're doing with flag, flag football okay, already okay. in Nigeria. We've started sowing the seeds to hopefully participate in mm. maybe 2028 yeah. or 2032. Mm. That is where the world is moving to. The lifespan or the attention span of uh, 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 people now are shorter in right. terms of sports. Yeah. So mm. I think that we should start thinking towards that. Um, uh, direction. It's just a shame that we don't have people who have that long-term long -term vision. vision yeah. you know?